LVC has been around as a concept since about the mid-2000s. It's where we take our virtual environment, which is our high fidelity simulators, or you can use lower fidelity simulators as well, and you link them with constructive or computer generated entities, we call those semi-automated forces, and we take them, those two entities who play together in this virtual environment, and we push uh, that information to and from cockpits of live jets flying on training ranges. So we have many new mission sets and new, new, new threats, new missions that we have to, to do um, and to, to prepare for. So, and we don't necessarily have any more flight hours to prepare for those missions. So it's taking the hours that we have now and maximizing those hours to get as much training as we possibly can out of those hours. And we think this is the way that we can do it. With just the ability to generate a constructive threat, a, you know, a computer game style, computer generated, any type of threat, whether that's an aircraft or a surface air missile battery or a, a ship of some kind, to be able to generate that track, put it anywhere we want to put it in the, the virtual environment and have it do whatever we want it to do to mimic whatever threat we think is going to be out there and their, their capabilities, that should be a, an advantage over what we do now. In the past, we could only link you know, trainers that are on one base or in one building together. Now that we can link either cross-country between second and third marine aircraft wing or link between different type model series across a base, it allows them to do more realistic training that they have out, uh, can normally only do in the aircraft. Now they can do that in the trainer, which one saves us money, two does a lower risk training than doing it in the actual aircraft. It allows us to do some quality training um, that we could normally do across country because the assets aren't available, and it increases our readiness because our simulators have a much higher readiness availability than the aircraft do. Traditionally now, we, if our aircraft want to go fly and want to talk to another squadron to get some, so say a, an E-2 squadron wants to go and fly a couple flights uh, with their F-18 counterparts and do some training, there's a lot of coordination that goes into that, that piece. So the big benefit of this would be any flight at any time can, with a little bit of prior coordination, can launch up, link into the LVC architecture or LVC environment and queue up any training scenario that they want. So it kind of it sa saves us some money, maybe saves us some time, and maximizes, really maximizes the live training hours. Because I think increasing proficiency is really the number one focus, at least for me in training. Uh, but certainly, the expense of fielding new adversaries, the expense of flying 10 blue forces on a range at any particular time, the expense of maintaining range, the fatigue life, the gas, all that, if we can minimize the number of aircraft that are flying at any one particular time, but not sacrifice the realism in the cockpit, then that's the real value of LVC. It'll allow us to basically take uh, people who are geographically dispersed and not at the same locations and allow them to plan an exercise via teleconferences and VTCs and then turn that into a real exercise over a simulated network. Sometimes when we join up units before we go on deployment that are not from the same base. And so when those units, maybe a West Coast and an East Coast unit, are getting ready to deploy together as part of the same unit, they can practice and get to know each other's flight habits prior to deployment by link through simulation. There'll always be a big advantage for a live person in a live aircraft flying against another live person, another thinking live person in another live aircraft. And just the unscripted nature of that, of that engagement, that interaction is always going to be very beneficial to everybody involved. But it's, this just gives another level, another layer of training that we can do to get people prepared for everything prior to that direct interaction. I think the future is going to be that we can not only just link the aviation assets, but we can link them to either surface uh, simulation or to ground-based simulation for the Marine Corps aspect of it, and also with other services that we can actually do full-blown joint exercises in a virtual environment. We're very excited in PMA 205. We are not the focal point for LVC, but we're certainly a participant in uh, developing this capability for the fleet. We think it's, it's going to be uh, a game changer, and once we start doing LVC um, training um, daily or weekly or monthly or however, whatever the frequency is, is that it'll be one of those enduring capabilities that we never walk away from. Once you uh, are addicted to LVC, you'll continue to use it over and over and over again.